because my own experience was with health was going to people, you know, the most credentialed people, honestly, who've read maybe the most studies and that kind of conventional strategy approach just didn't work for what I was dealing with. And a lot of people in the chronic health space, that's where they end up. So when you're looking at these studies, when you're building your knowledge, when you're, you know, referencing the literature, but, and also taking into account these, these principles that we, we, a lot of what you talked about today, which yes, there are some studies on it, but there's also, you know, contrarian studies and, and counter arguments. How do you um, decide, you know, or evaluate maybe even just at a granular, granular level, like, okay, this is what the study says, but are you looking at um, sources and funding or, or how are you sifting through to decide this is, this is something I'm going to build upon my knowledge and, and take with versus, yeah, this might be in the, uh, the other boat that's, that's just not, um, doesn't seem to be what you're using in, you know, in practice. I love this question, Josh, because I'm like the biggest skeptic when it comes to studies, <laughs> the biggest skeptic. Uh, and it's funny because I get this all the time on Instagram where I'll post something and someone will say, where are the studies? And I always want to say, do you have any idea what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's insane. I mean, a lot of people don't, to me, that's like, it's like basically kind of modern day, like religious dogma, you know, like thousands of years ago. It's like, because God said so. Now it's like, because there's one study that says it, but I have no idea, you know, the quality of that study or, or what's actually, you know, within it. Yeah. And speaking of light, there's like no light controls. I mean, a lot of these studies are done on mice, which are nocturnal animals. I mean, they're just, it's, you got to just take things, you know, with a grain of salt and as information that you might, may or may not translate clinically. And most of the time it doesn't translate clinically. Uh, with, with phosphatidylcholine, I mean, I think when you look at, when you start to really understand the cell, then, I mean, I don't, and my clinical experience too, just seeing the benefits that um, phospholipids provide patients. I don't need, you know, a thousand studies to make me feel confident to recommend um, phospholipids. That's for sure. And really just when you understand that they are conditionally essential nutrients. If you're a human, if you're a mammal, you have cells and your cells are primarily comprised of phospholipids. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think that we have to be very careful when we look at studies. I was just talking to uh, my partner about this when it comes to nutrition research on, you know, cardiovascular disease. And you see all these studies showing that a plant-based diet, a vegetarian diet, and it's like intuitively, I, I probably shouldn't even go down those rabbit holes. <laughs> <laughs> stir up formal. That's good. We stir it up. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> well, intuitively, I I know that that can't be right. You know, that's not the way that we evolved to, to eat. Uh, and then I really believe that food is all about photosynthesis. So uh, slapping on, you know, one dietary approach for every single person, no matter where they live, just because they have a certain condition, I, I also don't think is accurate. Uh, because I don't think that somebody that's living in Canada should be eating fruits and vegetables all winter when those fruits and vegetables don't grow where they live. Uh, but long story short, yeah, I think that you have to be really discerning with a lot of the literature that you read. And I do always look at funding because obviously that says everything, right? Like when you look at research on statins, it's all funded by pharmaceutical companies that are making statins. So it's, and, and you see that, you know, in so many different topics. Um, but I still think it's interesting to read, you know, what's being studied and the outcomes of some of these. So I never want to put myself in a position where I'm not willing to see the other side, uh, because I innately am a little bit of an extremist and I am drawn to like fringe I'm drawn to information that is not mainstream. I have been that way my my whole life. I, somebody tells me to do something, I immediately want to do the opposite. And so that's really led me to 
I mean, I'm grateful for that because it's led me to explore uh, areas that uh, I would have never discovered if I wasn't that way. Uh, and it also gives you the, the confidence to feel, you know, I, I'm, I'm not really swayed by somebody's opinion or, you know, I'm always wanting to really get curious and find answers for myself. So I don't really know if I answered your question, but. Uh, you, you definitely did. I mean, it's uh, it takes some critical thinking. Like there, it's totally true. There is some value in there, but doing it blindly, like a lot of people um, seem to do, you know, it, it's again, it goes back to what we talked about earlier. Like those are the extremes and probably somewhere down the middle is the sweet spot where we can make use of it, but also know, you know, who your sources are and, and what's going to work. And then, I'm, I'm totally in the boat of what you said of like what works practically. I mean, it's, I think it's like within the last hundred years, if, or a little bit more, we discovered vitamin C. So we didn't even know about it till then, you know, it was, it was like a mystery. So what are we, what are we going to know in a hundred years from now? And so a lot of what we know, or we think to be so true or cutting edge science, like that's going to change. So I really believe doing the best we can now, like, you know, the only way we can get move forward is to build upon, you know, what we have and where we're at. So that's not to discount what we have now completely, but it's complete like blind faith or thinking this is the, the end all be all. Um, like I said, like I definitely experienced that and it wasn't the end all be all. And, and in the end of the day, it's like what worked practically, um, what got results from, for me here now. And, you know, people that quote, sometimes just throw out studies there. I'm like, that ah, that doesn't all add up, but I want to make use of it. So, I, you know, what I take away from your answer is the, the critical thinking and, and that, uh, that middle ground. And, and, you know, Josh too, if I could just quickly say something to build on that, it, I think it's also like looking at uh, all of the different nuances of studies too. I just had this ex- actually experience uh, looking up uh, the APOE44 allele and the research on following a low-fat diet for that specific um, genotype. And it was just really interesting, my journey and reading those studies and then also, you know, kind of following these trails where then you find, okay, well, they recommend, you know, a low-fat diet and, and low amounts of animal protein for that allele, but then you find these studies where high cholesterol is actually protective for those individuals. Um, and you, it's just, so I think that a lot of times, I mean, you can't really take a study at face value. You need to read that study and then get super curious and then look at, you know, all these different pieces uh, that were maybe included in that study that might lead you down another avenue that you're going to find information that doesn't really um, make that original study consistent with the new one that you found. So like, re- yeah, research is nuanced for sure. And again, I always say for every study that you find a benefit for something, you're going to find another study that shows the opposite. That's like, I mean, what I've found anyway, pretty much across the board. Uh, and that makes sense because I don't think there's one thing that, you know, we can take or that we can do or that, I mean, aside from maybe, you know, the things that we can do to connect to nature that are going to be good for everyone all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great point. You know, everyone, everyone is different. I definitely see that in, in practice too. All right. Well, we, I could go on and on, but we'll, uh, I'll respect our time here and just want to say thank you for coming on, for sharing your knowledge. It was great to hear um, also some of the things you're excited about now and looking into and appreciate what you shared with everybody. Oh, thanks Josh for having me. It was really nice to spend this hour with you. <laughs>